So Felix, I feel that it makes sense. I mean, a lot of people I I, I feel that are going to be and that are excited to be reading uh, your prequel, uh, Church Beneath the Roots. I feel probably have read Stolen Tongues, but for those that haven't read Stolen Tongues, maybe don't even understand or, or are aware of the origin story, uh, I, I find like your origin story is fascinating all on its own as well. Uh, because from what my understanding, it started off as sort of a stitched together scenes of creepiness that you posted on Reddit on our, uh, I think, no sleep section over there. Do you, do you mind maybe talk a little bit about that before it became the novel that it became? Yeah, sure. Um, so, gosh, I've told the story so many times. I, I feel like sometimes I forget the details that are. <laughs> um, I started off as a writer. Yeah, I mean, I've been writing since I was a little kid. And um, I wrote a novel in 2008 from 08 to 2014. It took a very long time. Um, it was called In the Devil's Dreams. And when I released it, you know, it got a, a few hundred sales over a couple of years, but nobody really knew who I was or paid attention to me, um, which was fine because I wrote that more as like an act of catharsis for myself coming out of a, a difficult uh, personal situation. And the book speaks to that. But um, I kind of gave up writing when I went to graduate school because, you know, I was just so busy. And one day I, I threw a tantrum um, because my doctoral advisor had a big issue with some project that I did. And she, she decided that I had to redo it. Like I had to reorganize the whole structure of this project. And I was so pissed off. I went home and I, I, um, for some reason I was just browsing Reddit. It was like an act of, um, defiance. You know, I should be working tonight, but I'm not going to work. I'm just going to browse Reddit. And I came across the no sleep, which is a subreddit there. It's like a forum. It's a role-playing horror forum, and the idea is you you tell a scary story. It has to seem true. Um, so probably not good if you're you know talking about being abducted by aliens and you're on their ship or something. It has to be slightly more believable than that. Um, and that the readers are obligated to suspend disbelief, and they have to interact with you as though the story is true. So um, I just told a little story about my... Uh, she she was not my wife at the time. She was my partner. Our relationship was pretty new. And she is a sleepwalker and a sleep talker. And at the beginning of our relationship, there were a couple of instances in which she said some really creepy things to me while she was sleeping in the middle of the night. One of them was like, she woke up and did, she didn't really wake up. She sat up in bed, still asleep and said, Felix, there's, there's a, a huge snake under the bed. It's all oiled up in the, um, you know, the metal frame. And that scared the hell out of me because at the time I didn't even know she was sleep talking. Um, I thought she was awake. So I was like, Oh fuck. Um, and then there was another occasion where she woke up and said, tell the man in the hallway, he needs to leave. And there was nobody in the hallway. So we thought of it as a ghost. So, um, I started I started writing this short story on No Sleep about being in a cabin with her up in the Colorado Rockies, which is actually where I grew up. And the the premise was simple. It's like this couple goes to this cabin and they hear some creepy noises outside. And um, the characters are based on me and my partner. And then... I just, you know, there was nothing special about that first entry. I just submitted it and it blew up. It, it was, it just talked about, you know, hearing noises outside and hearing voices that we recognize, but they can't possibly be the people we think they are. You know, my, my mother is not walking around in zero degree weather up in the mountains. Um, and then I had this idea after it blew up and people just loved the story. I was like, what if, what if, she starts sleep talking. What if Faye starts sleep talking and someone outside starts talking back to her? And that was sort of the genesis of the imposter, which has since become a pretty popular um, modern horror monster. Because so I just, you know, went from there. I also based it on a parrot. Um, I had a friend who had a really creepy parrot. And I also, the opposite my spouse worked at a, a zoo where there was a parrot that was pretty creepy too at night. So I kind of worked that in there. The imposter is a, a giant parrot and he doesn't quite understand 
what he's doing when he mimics people. He just does it because that's what he sees. Um, so people really like that uncanny valley stuff. So that's where the story came from. Uh, I had no idea that it would blow up as hard as it. I mean, you have to understand. I sold like 120 copies of In the Devil's Dreams and Stolen Tongues just as a short story free on the internet was getting me tens of thousands of visits to my website and you know hundreds and hundreds of emails like I couldn't keep up after a couple of days thousands of reddit comments up to like 50,000 upvotes I'm just a fucking crazy statistics sorry I'm saying it's it's everybody loves to scare at the parent yeah <laughs> she's probably the best part of the story um so the the reddit the, the no sleep readers requested that I publish the book you know I just like take like copy paste the story into a book and I said I don't really have the time or the money to do that because I'm in school and so they suggested that I crowdfund it and they said like we will fund this project for you um so I did it and I didn't hire an editor and I I mean I've really just kind of copy pasted the story with some minor edits and expansions uh I wrote a new intro for it, which is Carrot the Parrot. And I, the the book just had legs from day one. I've never seen anything like it. I did nothing to market it. And I get emails every week from new writers. How do you market books? How do you get such a face? <laughs> it's about to cross 10,000 reviews on Amazon. And I always tell them, like, I'm the last person in the world to answer that question because I, I don't have a parrot. <laughs> yeah, I <didn't. laughs> It's just dumb luck, you know, and there are so many writers all over books of horror and all over the internet who are factually better writers than me techni- tech, you know, from a technical perspective. There's just like Nick Roberts and John Durgan and, and all these guys, CF Page, they're better, they're better writers than me. They're more literary. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the origin of Solid Tones. 